Reporting our Earth as a brilliant jewel in the black velvet sky, former American astronaut and crew member of Apollo 11, Buzz Aldrin got to see a unique perspective of our Earth from space. And being so far away, but yet getting a completely new picture of Earth and getting to see it in a sense from a bigger picture, we can assume that he got a unique sense of connectivity towards it. My journey towards sustainability really started in 2015 when I witnessed uh, the trash crisis occur in Lebanon when the government stopped picking up the trash and meanwhile there was a refugee crisis happening so then you had refugees on the streets trying to find a place to sleep and there was trash piling up so those resulted in the burning of the trash to clear the streets and that trash burning of course propagated really toxic gases in the air which even spread disease and I actually caught one of those it was horrible and then after that I came back to Kuwait kind of felt the need to do something and over the time I started getting more experience in that field I got to do some work with researchers in MIT um, and then I started data collection for air pollution with hopes of of raising awareness within the community and really working on air pollution in the Middle East and how we could aid because what I did was I focused on data collection through Ergo Kuwait which is something I did in high school and now I moved on to university and I'm studying at Columbia University in the city of New York and I'm hoping to pursue a major in sustainable development ultimately trying to help alleviate uh, environmental damage in the region. In December of 2019 we came across the experiment in space competition and then when I saw that opportunity, like we knew we needed to partner up and participate. It's important to note that space exploration, which is what we touched on a bit earlier, uh, was actually not the no only notable event of the mid 20th century, because at the same time that space was being traversed, scientists on Earth were realizing that those simmering, glowing skies and waters and crisp forests were being affected by a new understanding of our environment's behavior. What scientists were realizing was that carbon dioxide levels in our atmosphere, carbon dioxide being a detrimental greenhouse gas, were rapidly increasing and affecting life in each and every one of its corners. Specific to the Middle Eastern region alone, these uh, levels of carbon dioxide have been affecting people all over the region's health um, as a result of climate change, air pollution, and environmental damage. And so taking matters into hand, researchers in the Middle East have actually been tapping into synthetic organisms in hopes of converting atmospheric carbon dioxide into various forms for human use. Such forms include food, fuel, uh, organic chemicals, and these all of, all of these are currently being utilized into aiding some of our most pressing environmental challenges pertaining to climate change. And now, although organisms that are capable of using energy from light to fix carbon dioxide into the vital components, the biological components of life could be difficult to modify, successful attempts have been made to genetically modify E. coli bacteria. In fact, over the past decade, these researchers have endeavored in the development of a specific strain of E. coli bacteria capable of growing by consuming carbon dioxide instead of sugars and organic molecules. And so after pitching our idea in this experiment in space local competition of several other high school and university students, we earned the privilege of being the first in the nation's history to send an experiment from Kuwait to the International Space Station. We've been trying to investigate the potential effect that microgravity has on the ability of E. coli to rely on carbon dioxide as its only food source, starting with our investigations on Earth and preparing control samples, of course. We want to then specifically observe the behavior of the E. coli in a weightless environment to see if microgravity, zero gravity, may increase the likelihood of E. coli resorting to carbon dioxide and obtaining its necessary energy. And of course, the implications of 
a bacteria like this possessing such uh, a feature and such capabilities are vast, uh, from Earth applications to space, to space applications. Um, and of course, we're only starting at the microscopic level, but the implications and real life significance that we see, that we foresee are broad, um, not only to sustaining Earth and space life, but also to understanding more about the specific strain of E. coli and the different things it could do. With every milestone, we've also been trying to spread more awareness in our local community through outlets such as the Scientific Center Q8, social media video updates, and live Q&A sessions. With the TSCK video updates, we've managed to educate and spur an interest in science within a younger audience and showcase how STEM can assert itself in any way possible. Most importantly, we've also done live Q&A sessions, such as one that Omar did in Arabic, to keep the local community informed about the purpose behind our experiment and its significance in taking climate action. And at the same time, we've been communicating our message, spreading awareness, and really immersing ourselves into the scientific world to further develop our project. We consistently strive to envision Aldrin's bigger picture, even with all of our resources today, even with our especially enhanced technology that makes our view of space ever so familiar, to really value those intricate processes that make each and every one of our lives on Earth possible. And as far as our research moves forward with our astounding team, we always try and remember the real life significance of this research and that it arises from the fact that microbes built to rely on carbon dioxide for growth like E. coli, the specific strain of E. coli, it could potentially decrease levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, ranging from its versatility of renew including renewable fuels, food, and other resources, and its implications for further developing carbon filtration systems in space, our investigation only furthers the importance of taking action, spreading awareness, and thinking innovatively to address a pressing universal issue affecting residents of Kuwait, people all over the world, and even people up in space every single day.